It's the cube. Here is your host, Jeff Crick. Hi, Jeff Rick here. We're on the ground in Silicon Valley at the SAP Silicon Valley headquarters in Palo Alto, California. We're here for a very special event. It's, uh, it was the Makers, Women Who Make America, Women in Business uh, preview. It's a movie, a documentary put on uh, by KQED. We watched the movie, then we had a great panel afterwards, about 200 uh, people in the crowd, and um, happy to have the panelists take a few minutes so we can kind of bring you, who weren't here, a little bit of the flavor of the action. So we're joined next by Ann Barlow, who's a partner at Peppercom, Correct. and also Watermark Vice Chair. Right. So welcome. Thank you very much. Pleasure so, to be here. So what did you think of the panel? Well, first of all, the group of women I was with, not only on the panel, but really in the room, were just really energetic, knowledgeable. It was great discussion. Yeah, it was, and it was a good movie, too. I hadn't seen that movie, so we, we tweeted it out. Um, really, some of the early pioneers, right. some of these women in advertising and uh, Wall Street and some of the things we don't think about here on the West Coast. Right. Finally, we had Sheryl Sandberg and some tech, uh, Meg Whitman on there, like, all right, finally right. some Silicon Valley girls. <laughs> but um, right. really some interesting strategies by those women early days, kind of pre-entrepreneurial right. opportunities where they just either sucked it up and just out-toughed them yeah. or said, forget it, I'm going to leave and do my own thing. Right. I don't even know if they knew how brave they were at that time. And uh, they're all older than I am, but maybe not a whole lot older. But they really did forge new paths. And I think they just felt as if they, if they weren't going to be given what they deserved, that they were going to find a way to get there. And really, they made life a little easier, at least, for the women who followed them. Right, they're right. amazing. And you made an interesting comment about your early days, your early career, and you said on Wall Street right. that you you were given a job that you knew they gave you because they had to. So you know, how did that how did that make you feel? Did you feel like you had some responsibility to to really do well at that position? You thought, well, this is kind of a screwy deal. I mean, what did you feel like in that situation? It was an interesting situation. I wanted to work on Wall Street, and I wanted to be a broker or trader. I thought that was really interesting, and so. I started pursuing that as a career, and I was hired by a place that really I found out later was going to be in trouble if they didn't hire a woman. Uh, what I felt was, first of all, some sense of humor because they really didn't know what to do with me. And the other thing was that I, I did feel that I had to not only do as well as the other men, but I did feel like I had to do better than the men to prove myself. And how long did you stay in that career, and why did you leave that, that industry? I stayed for three years. And then uh, we, were, we moved to Toronto, and that was time for me to try something really that I had wanted to do all along, which was PR and marketing. I loved the job that I had. It wasn't because I didn't feel like uh, I had a chance as a woman. It was really because I missed a cr having a creative outlet. Right. So another topic that, that we touched on, you touched on on the panel and, and comes up a lot is kind of this idea of sponsorship. Sponsorship, right. mentors, and then you added another word that doesn't get often uh, put in the mix, and it's, it's, it's a prodigy. Yes. Explain what, what that means when you say that and, and how you see those roles and the importance of those roles and, and kind of the management of executing those roles. Sure. So my volunteer job is the vice chair of Watermark, which is for executive women and emerging executive women. And uh, Watermark has a program called Patrons and Protégés. And what that is really about is helping women uh, who are earlier in their career to advance. But one of the things that we learned is that it's not just having women as mentors and people to emulate, but really where we can make a difference is when men get involved. Mm -hmm. And it's been remarkable not just for the women, but for the men as well. And, and what are the... What are kind of the exchanges? What's, what's the real kind of meat of the value that happens in those types of programs? And specific things that they're either learning, taking up, or when they graduate on, or they take on that role mm -hmm. that they look back and say, wow, this was really the moment, this was really the advice, this was what really helped me. Or is it, or is it such a big thing? Is it just more, you know, we meet once a month, we meet once a quarter, we have lunch, or we, we get updated? Well, there's a, it's a very specific program, okay. and uh, both the patron and the protege come together. They set goals. Uh, it's a lot about con making connections. You know, so much in our career, our careers are about 
making connections that can help us to do our jobs, to advance our careers. And men are really good at this, and women are still learning. Um, so what the men who have been patrons have helped us do is really uh, figure out how to do that. And they've opened doors okay. and didn't realize that the doors weren't necessarily open for the women who they were sponsoring until they went through the program. So that's really been one of the biggest things that women have learned. Okay. So we're getting the hook here. Been a, uh, a long evening, good evening, but you touched on one topic we got to get on, which All is right. dress code. I, it, dress code is, I think it's really hard. I mean, it used yeah. to be you just wore your suit, you know, you knew what you had to wear or, or you wore, and, and now people wear everything. Right. We, had, we had meetings in New York one time, the only people that had a tie on were the NFL. No, <laughs> the, no other people had a tie on. So it's like, what am I supposed to wear? Right. You go to IBM and, and um, in, in uh, Raleigh Durham and, and there's not a jacket for as far as you can see so talk about the challenges of dress code and really kind of some strategies um, that young women and also young men should think about right, right. or old women and old, old men women yes and old men. yes I go to the thing that worked yesterday but <laughs> so so for I think the reality is you do have to at least take into consideration the environment you're in and I mean that both ways if everyone else is, a, is in a suit and you show up in flip flops it might be a problem but so is the reverse of that so you have to start there and then the second thing is I do think it's important for all of us to think about well how am I showing up and is that okay uh, there are there is an argument to be made that why should I care it's really about me and who I am on the inside but you know the truth is we are judged you know the book is judged by its cover right, so right. it matters think about it and and then find your own style within the context of where you are right Good, t good advice. Great Thank advice. You. All right, Anne, thanks for stopping by. My Anne pleasure. Barlow, it's great to have you. Thank great you. panel. Thanks for participating. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. We're on the ground at the SAP Silicon Valley headquarters in Palo Alto. Thanks for watching.